the 100 mile diet is gaining momentum around the world and the sea restaurant in vancouver is part of this sustainable food movement the chefs at this restaurant work closely with british columbia farmers and seafood suppliers as part of their commitment to offering fresh local ingredients on their menu the restaurant's decision to buy pinto abalone from the huayat nation despite the challenges is critical to the success of the abalone project And I understand you already have an agreement with one restaurant in Vancouver? Yes. It's been over 19, 20 years now, I guess, since um, no one could have abalone. So it's kind of right out of the marketplace. There's a lot of the chefs really don't know how to deal with abalone. You know, there's the imported abalone from Australia, New Zealand, California. But uh, the pinto abalone, like it's been long gone off the, 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 the marketplace. These Banfield Pinto abalones that we have at Sea Restaurant here, these are unique to this restaurant and uh, actually I don't think there's, I know that there's no other restaurant out here in BC that serves this, this uh, Pinto abalone. Probably from. the world then because... Yeah, I think so, probably the world because it is, the, the wild product is actually a, a protected species so, and uh, for us to use the farm thing is quite unique and quite special. So what is the benefit of Pinto abalone when you could use imported or other species of abalone? Well, for us at Sea, it's that we focus a lot on local seafood. Like we have a strong focus on local and sustainable seafood. This is, Pinto abalone is a land-based farming that's incredibly sustainable. The whole purpose of the farm is to, is to repopulate the wild species. So a lot of this, like the product itself speaks uh, highly about the ideals of this restaurant. Uh, well, a number of years ago, we were fortunate enough to uh, to meet Richard, uh, and he presented um, or he explained to us what was going on in Bansfield, and it got us pretty excited. And we even had uh, a collection of chefs come down to see restaurant, uh, so we could give a presentation as to what they were doing, why they were doing it, the importance of what's going on at the at the Avalon Hatchery, uh, and to see if any of us chefs would be interested in, in carrying the product. And of course, see, we, we were right on board right away, and. Uh, We've been using it ever since. So chefs and restaurants such as yours have access to other types of abalone. What makes uh, Pinto special? Well, why it's special, to, to get away from the, the culinary aspects of it, why it's special for us that we're using is because it's local. We, we understand the, the challenges uh, of a, working with a species at risk. Uh, we encourage, or we believe that if we're purchasing abalone from the hatchery, that we're helping finance them, which in, in essence is, is growing abalone to, re, to restock or reseed the wild. And, and for us, being so concerned about sustainability, that's very important to us. They come shipped live to us, packed in salt water. No, Since no. it's against the law to be even seen with uh, shells or jewelry coming from this animal, exactly. this species, what do you do with the shells here? Well, all the shells here, like we have to, like the number of pieces is counted that leaves the farm. So say, for example, 70 pieces leave the farm, 70 pieces have to show up here. Once all the abalone can only be consumed inside the restaurant, the shells can't leave. The shells have to be shipped back to the farm. It's also because the poaching of abalone is really, really bad thing happening nowadays. And it's probably there's worse than it's ever been. Um, and there's people that get hundreds of thousands of dollars of fines of, for poaching abalone annually. And for these shells, because the shells, they, change the, they actually change the feed of the abalone during its life cycle, where they give it a red algae and it gives the abalone a nice red, a red line on it. Right. And that distinguishes the abalone from the uh, wild species. Not to mention these, these abalone, the pinto abalone, have very clean shells. Like there's no barnacles, no sea stuff on top that have grown onto it. So they're very clean shells. What a poacher could essentially do is if, they, if the shells were to get in the wrong hands, a poacher could take the wild, the actual wild ones that they've poached and insert the meat into the, into the shell and turn around and try to sell it as the uh, farmed pinto abalone. Oh. It's such a beautiful shell. Yeah, they are. They have, they have that wonderful color and, and it's like, it's, it's almost a waste that, it has to, that they have to be destroyed. But at the same time, is it's so in order that we can actually right. still serve a, a, such a great product here, right? A true BC product. In Banfield, I did get to make 
friends with some of these. So now I get to see them being prepared. Can you tell us what you have here and what you're going to do with it? I've already, I've just poached it off in olive oil. So I've slowly poached it off in olive oil just to make it nice and tender. We're going to make a little salad with uh, some jellyfish, some watermelon radish, and a little bit of like, dried smoked albacore that we've, that I've made and dried and preserved. So we're going to do a little combination of salad of all that. So it's a very BC forward dish. So one thing with the abalone is it really needs to be sliced really thin. I've got a lemon and olive oil dressing. Okay. Just gonna lightly dress that. And we're gonna start laying it on the plate. So what we have here is a little watercress puree. So it's a puree of all the It's not algae then. No, this is not we're not we're not onto the algae yet. <laughs> we're getting there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the jellyfish. Jellyfish is a great vessel for like salads and stuff because it's got a bit of a crunch. It's got a similar texture to that of the abalone okay. and really, really has no flavor. <laughs> These are watermelon radish. Grown in BC? Yep, in Coston. So everything's, everything here is a BC product. We just got a little bit more lemon and olive oil, my seaweed, a little bit of snowing of uh, the albo smoked albacore. And there we have it. That's it. That's it. No, tips. How would a guy go about eating this? Just pick and choose? No, just take, take, take a fork, fork and just shovel. OK. Just shovel it all in. All right. It's easy. Our mandate is to be as sustainable as pro possible. And as a chef, we have a huge impact on, on not only what we choose to buy, but what we convince other people to purchase. We have a responsibility to do things uh, sustainably. Um, and I mean, that for us here at Sea, it comes naturally, uh, but we encourage and have encouraged others to, uh, uh, to follow. Abalone. It's very nice. Bit of a smoky flavor with the little sauces. Every bit on this plate, it's pretty amazing. It's from a different region, at least the lower half of BC. So everything is local, everything is organic.